Hey everyone, welcome to the first episode of my Airbrush Basics series, where I'm gonna get you from zero knowledge to painting up an entire Gumpla kit. If you paint other plastic models, you can still get a lot of the basics from this series. Now, let's take a look at the setup and the tools and paints that you'll need. NewType is a fast and reliable source of Gunpla paints and tools shipped internationally. Purchasing with my affiliate link newtype.us slash frostysnow also helps support me with a small commission. First of all, you are going to need a spray booth. I've already done a video. You can click above to check it out. I'm not going to repeat myself, but I will mention some of the things that we've changed so far since I've filmed the video a year ago. First of all, we do have a really big booth, but for most people, you don't need a booth of this size. If you're painting mostly miniatures or SDHG, even MG kits, a booth of this size is a little bit of an overkill. Whatever booth you make or choose, it's really good to have kind of a lid here from the top of the spray booth helps to prevent the overspray from coming out. You may notice actually we used to have two LED lights, but one of them got busted. So we have an overhead light. Lighting is really important for your booth for you to see the parts that you're painting. You In previous videos, a lot of people also commented about how we don't have a filter on our vents. And I've already done a video detailing a lot about why we've chosen to do that. Since I last filmed the video, we have changed this fan out just because it was getting really um, dirty. Uh, we have also cleaned out our Sirocco fan. So taking this guy outside and emptied it out. Uh, you do need to do that a little bit more frequently if you don't have a filter. I've also changed out the power outlet. In our previous video, our outlet didn't have these switches. So this turns on the big fan over top of the booth. This one. Because in the past, we were unplugging everything. So much more convenient to get something with individual controls. It's actually really helpful having some kind of board at the bottom of your spray booth because you'll notice it does get really dirty and we have cleaned it with thinner. Also, I have spilled paint on this acrylic board and the cleanup is a lot easier than if we had just left it like um, as this bear would. Finally, our compressor. A lot of people always ask, we always keep it at 25 PSI. Okay, it's a little bit higher today because Cookie just uh, cleaned it up yesterday, but we do usually keep it at 25. A lot of people also mentioned about how our compressor is in this box and how it's gonna explode and heat up. Since I've made the video for the past year, and before I made the video, we had already been using the setup for a year. We haven't had any problems at all. It does get a little bit warm to the touch, but it's not like really hot. And notice that because of this tube that comes out of here, it actually doesn't uh, close completely. Also, our compressor is really small. We only use it one person at a time. We don't use it for like eight hours a day. So it doesn't really get overheated that way. I have heard of really large compressors that are shared by like four or five people in a Gunpla studio that did actually like explode uh, because they had kept it in a cupboard closed without any ventilation. But I mean, most people don't use a really huge compressor between four or five people in their own homes. We're really thinking of a personal setup here. Okay, so that's basically the setup of our booth, compressor, and ventilation system. Things that I forgot to mention or have changed so far. Now I'm gonna talk a little bit about the airbrush. Something I didn't mention in the previous video was a moisture trap. It's basically used to filter out any moisture that might get into the air and into your paint and affecting your paint job. But most compressors, I'm, I think nowadays, they already have a moisture trap. And actually at Gunpla Studios, all of the compressors are heavy duty enough that you don't need the moisture trap. I actually bought a moisture trap when I first went to the Gunpla Studio and the owner was like, okay, you don't need one. But when I tried to refund it, the owner of the store was like, oh, you need to get a moisture trap. You can also buy something called a quick stop. It basically like pops off your airbrush. Like, so if you have more than one airbrush, you can easily change out your airbrush with the quick stop. Whereas for us now, we have to 
you know, like deterring this knob. Um, also, when I was at the old Gunpla studio, they actually just gave us a quick stop because the air was kind of leaking for some reason from this connection. But we don't have that problem at all at home and we only have one airbrush, so we don't need a quick stop. I also want to mention that if you buy all of these things like a moisture trap and a quick stop, it's just gonna make the distance between your airbrush and the tube longer and longer. And you're just gonna need a taller airbrush holder to accommodate all the extra little things that you've added to the end of your airbrush. So as I mentioned before, this is the airbrush that I use. This is basically what I think of as the poor man's good airbrush. Between me and Cookie, we've been using this airbrush for the past three years. Uh, Cookie broke his last airbrush, which was this one as well, and he used that for like over five years. Some people have asked me to review airbrushes, but actually this is the only one that I've ever used. Some people like to buy two airbrushes to do different things like one to paint one to top coat one another to do metallics but i think that if you just clean it really well and you're smart about what you paint first uh, when you change colors i don't really think that's necessary also there are so many different airbrushes on the market the reason why i chose this airbrush specifically is because just simply i used to attend gunpla studios and this is the airbrush that's provided at like public studios and i didn't want to be someone who's painted Gumpla for years you know, and be like, oh, I don't know how to use this most basic um, airbrush. I'm used to like my fancy gun trigger airbrushes. When you first start out, I think it's really good to start off with the basics. This is a 0 0.3 needle and this is what you're really gonna use the most when you're painting gumpla anything below 0 0.3 is really for detailed work anything above this is for larger scale painting the accessories that we have still got our q-tips clean out the head of the airbrush the dust resistant kleenex for cleaning inside of the cup to prevent clogging our old thinner bottle our little garbage can smellies used thinner tissue now i'm going to talk about some of the other accessories outside of the booth and they're things that i haven't mentioned before first of all when you paint you will find you'll get a little overspray that will get on your hands and i usually try to wear gloves in the past at the old gumpla studio i didn't really know anything and i used to wear these like paper thin masks that will not block out any of the smell so these are basically useless in a pinch you can use these they block out i would say about 80 percent of the smell sometimes i use these when i'm just doing a quick painting the best are really these respirators you can buy the mask and the filters separately just change out the filters once you wear these you won't smell anything I wear a small, Cookie wears a medium, but he's got a pretty small head even for a guy. And I really do recommend you guys wear a mask. In the past, Cookie used to paint without wearing a mask and he'd complain about getting headaches a lot. And then I finally was the one who um, bought him these respirators. Now when he paints, he never complains of getting a headache. Some people also say they get like runny eyes and I think that's because your booth is not taking out the fumes enough. So your setup might be something you need to work on. Next, when you paint, what you're gonna need is something to hold your parts. Large, medium, small, and these are micro. I do recommend you get a variety of sizes because it depends on the size of your part and the size of whatever is underneath and convenient for you to clip onto. This is roughly the amount of clips that I started out with, which fit into this uh, holder. And these were cookies clips. We used these separately when I was at the Gumpla studio and I found around this many clips was enough for me to paint up one MG kit. And you don't need one clip per part because you're, you might not be painting up the, all of the parts at the same time. The clip that you're really going to use the most is really this medium size. I do really recommend no matter what size kit you paint to get these micro clips they're really useful for parts that are sometimes hard to clip for parts that you really can't clip onto without ruining the paint we get like a piece of plat plate or cardboard 
and get some double-sided tape, stick it on here, clip it up and stick the part onto here to paint up. When you buy these, the big ones are gonna come with this part already set as a circle. So you can just stick your skewers in here. I personally did narrow down the tip of my skewers just to get it to fit into this tube here. With the smaller one, this metal part here, does have to be linked around the skewer. You don't have to shave the skewer down in this case, but you will need some kind of plier to bend this metal part into the skewer. And you're not gonna be able to do it with your fingers because trying to do that with a hundred of these, your, your fingers are just gonna die. Get a pair of long nose pliers. I got this for like $2 from Daiso and I've used this a lot when building Gumpla because when you paint, parts get really thick and they get stuck and you need something really heavy duty to pull it out. Now a lot of people ask about this high density foam. This is really the best option. I think you'll see it holds the part really strong. Anything else like cardboard, egg carton, you'll notice that it's kind of flimsy so it, it kind of falls sideways and when you've painted parts, you don't really want them knocking into each other. We've cut them into different sizes. This is around how many pieces of foam that that we have. Finally, let's move on to paints. Some people have asked me to recommend a good set of paints for beginners. First of all, the colors really depends on the kit that you're gonna paint, but there are still basic paints that you're gonna need to use. First, let's start with Surfacer. Basically, you need Surfacer to help your paint adhere to the plastic. If you don't use Surfacer, there's a chance that the paint can flake off your part and I have seen that before. Sometimes even though I don't top coat, I always spray Surfacer. They come in all kinds of different colors from black to grays to white to pink and reds. When you're just starting out, you don't really wanna buy a bunch of paints. So if I recommend you get just one, I recommend a light gray. Light gray will help you to cover the original color of the parts. If you wanna change the color of the part, it's also gonna be light enough so that if you wanna paint light colors over the top, it can be manageable for most lighter colors. Now, if you wanna paint something like a bright yellow, you will need a white surfacer. If you really want to get one more additional surfacer, then white surfacer is something else you can also consider. You might also try to skimp out on costs by buying car surfacer. It's really cheap and you get a really large amount, but it comes out a little bit speckly. So I only use this, say, for like a weathering kit or before painting up a resin kit, and you just need surfacer to see the imperfections on a part. I don't recommend getting car surfacer. Painting the inner frame of a Gunpla metallic is a really popular option. If you do plan to paint any metallics on your Gunpla, you will need a gloss black as the base for the metallic and your metallic color. If you paint just metallic over the surfacer, it's not gonna come out shiny. So I recommend you get one gloss black paint and whatever metallics you're gonna use, whether it's a silver, gold, or gunmetal. Next, obviously, you're gonna need your opaque colors. And as I said, I can't really make a color recommendation because I think it really depends on the kit that you're gonna paint. So when you choose your kit, plan ahead and get the colors that you think you're gonna need. You can always mix these paints up. When you're first starting off though, I do recommend that you don't try to play around too much with mixing paints. I recommend that you really just buy the paint that you think looks the most like the color that you're gonna use. After you've worked so hard to paint up your entire entire kit, you are going to need to top coat it to protect it. It also helps to protect from UV light so that your kit doesn't yellow over time. Now choosing the finish of your top coat can really be quite a dilemma. Personally, for beginners, I do recommend you go with a matte finish. It's a lot easier to spray than the gloss and it does give you a little bit of coverage over any scratches or dents or little boo-boos you made on your paint job. I'm gonna show you later how you can use matte top coat to cover up any very small imperfections on your paint. It can actually be a bit challenging to get a perfect glossy finish. And I'll also talk about why and how you can overcome that as we move on down this series. 
If you really don't like the matte finish, maybe you can consider a semi-gloss. It's still going to be a little bit easier to paint with than a gloss finish. Did you know that most lacquer paints come in small bottles like this that actually need to be thinned with thinner? There are pre-thinned paint coming out onto the market. You can give those a try, but eventually you're probably going to find yourself having to thin your paints. Now in this series, because I am working with lacquer paints, make sure you buy the right thinner for your paint. That is really, really important. So if your paints are lacquer, make sure you get lacquer thinner. Don't accidentally buy enamel thinner, which is used to thin enamel paint. Now there's a variety of lacquer thinners, not just with brands, but also with function. When you're first starting out, the very first bottle of thinner I recommend you get, if you can only buy one, is just your regular old basic standard thinner. Now I am going to tell you what leveling thinner means. Leveling thinner dries more slowly, so it gives your paint a little bit more time to level or separate out. Now the con of this is that leveling thinner makes your paint take a little bit longer to dry than regular thinner. I do recommend when you're just beginning and just starting out, you usually tend to be really impatient. So I do recommend you use the standard thinner. A lot of people ask, number one, whether you can mix different brands of thinner with different brands of paint. And the answer is yes depending on the thinner. Now, I wouldn't mix factory thinner with hobby paint just because factory thinner is really strong. I think really any hobby thinner will mix with really any hobby paints. Now, of course, this is a generalization. I use this IPP leveling thinner to mix everything. Surfacer, colors, metallics, top coat, just because it's so cheap. We haven't experienced any problems with our paints mixing everything with almost exclusively IPP thinner. While you can use hobby thinner to thin your paints, you can also use it to clean out your airbrush, which you are gonna have to use thinner to clean your airbrush because you've got paint inside and paint will not dissolve with water. That's really important to know. Now, of course, hobby thinner is a little bit expensive, so we use factory grade thinner to clean our airbrush. I don't recommend you use factory thinner to thin your hobby paints. They're really quite strong and we only use it for cleaning, but they're really cheap. So hobby brands also sell airbrush cleaning thinner. They're still a bit more expensive than factory grade thinner. You might think this is over, but you need to buy bottles. <laughs> you need something to mix your paint and thinner into. When you buy bottles, it's really based on two things. Is number one, the quantity of the paint and really the width or your storage space. So the larger the paint, the larger the bottle you're going to need. Check out the mixing ratio of the paint that you're going to buy. While most paints have a 1 to 1.5 mixing ratio, there is some variety. So if you're going to mix this bottle, which is 60 ml, you're going to need to buy an empty bottle that can hold 150 ml. I personally like this really slim bottle. It takes up less storage space. Now, while these are really the standard bottles to mix up your standard lacquer paints, I do also buy medicine bottles. These ones are a little bit big. These are 100 ml and these are 40, but these are really great when you want to mix just a small amount of paint together. Now, if you want to get a little bit fancy, you can also buy metal beads to put into the bottle after you've mixed the paint so you can swirl it around a bit. And it does help to mix the paint up a bit underneath, especially for surfacer because it does get a little bit hard and also for top coat. But this isn't absolutely necessary. When I first started painting, I never put metal beads in but um cookie really loves these so it can be a little bit daunting at first to try to mix up paints are you getting the right ratio you don't want to make a mess you don't want to buy extra measuring tools i'm going to show you how to do that in the next episode all right, I know that was a lot of stuff that we went through and it is a big investment to start airbrushing in this hobby. But once you've bought everything, most of the things you're gonna keep using over and over. And join me in the next episode in this airbrushing series where I'm gonna show you how to thin your paints before we start learning how to use the airbrush.
the same. We've still got our Q-tip. We still got the Q-tip Q-tips to clean. We still we've still got the Q-tip Q-tips. <laughs> I don't know if this is plate plate. We just get a little. <laughs> oh, I can't talk today. Protection. Make sure you use it. <laughs> okay. Going to Ashley's. Okay. I'm looking for Ashley. Oh. Yeah, I I'd like to thank my Patreon supporters who allow me to spend more time to build, paint, and produce videos while not having to worry about making a living at the same time. Patreon is a way for anyone to support their favorite creator and content. You can also join us on Discord to chat with me and fellow Gumpla hobbyists. Check it out at patreon.com slash frostysnow. Thanks for watching!